I'm David Gafford from the Barbecue Lab, bringing you the best gear, recipes, and techniques to help you win your weekend. The outdoor flat top cooking surface is bringing diner and teppanyaki cooking to the backyard, and Le Griddle has been making waves in the market for many years now. Today, we're putting the 30 inch Le Griddle to the test, and we've got it all coming up. Gathering around fire with family and friends and your neighbors has been something that's been happening for ages, and there's nothing like doing it in the outdoor kitchen space. Outdoor kitchens have really been gaining popularity lately, especially with those of us who've been staying home with COVID hitting. We find that the outdoor space with our security and our family at home is something that we're using a lot more often. Now, you'll usually see up to four different cooking units in an outdoor kitchen. A lot of times you'll find a grill, so some kind of a high heat grill, maybe propane, pellet, charcoal, or the like. Now you'll often also see a smoker. Now a smoker can be anything from pellet to charcoal to uh, actual offset wood, and you'll see usually one of those units as well. Sometimes you'll also see a pizza oven or an outdoor oven, something you can be able to cook at really, really high heat for breads and pizzas. And last but not least, something that's really gaining in popularity is the griddle. Now griddles have been around for quite a while now, but they've really hit the mainstream as companies like Blackstone and a few others have been able to really inundate the industry with units in the $300 to $600 range. Now, just like the automobile industry, quality is key here. You'll probably find quite a few $300 to $600 griddles in big box stores across the United States. What we're looking at today is to borrow a quote from Emeril, we're going to kick it up a notch. We're looking at griddles today that actually are meant to be built into an outdoor kitchen or cooked with on a tabletop in an outdoor setting most of the time. Now, Le Griddle has been doing this for many years, and one of the things that you're going to find that's really different about a Le Griddle is that this thing is made entirely of 304 stainless steel not just cold rolled steel. Now, you'll find a lot of cold rolled steel in a lot of the griddles of the, of the lesser expensive variety, but today we're looking at something that's all 304 stainless, not just cold rolled. Now, stainless is a great metal for outdoor units, primarily because it stands up to the elements. It's called stainless steel because primarily it doesn't weather, it doesn't rust. You'll find that this, this will last quite a long time. But one of the downsides to stainless steel is whenever you put a burner underneath, it tends to only heat the stainless that's right above it and it heats unevenly. Now, uneven heating surfaces you'll find in diners across the United States right now in all different areas. From your local steak and shake to your local teppanyaki restaurant, you'll find that they have stainless steel griddles that have massive dark spots as well as some light spots that are still colored stainless steel. One of the things that really makes Le Griddle unique is that they don't just put stainless steel on the top of their griddle. One of the things that really makes it special is that they have taken cast iron and put an entire plate of cast iron that they fuse to the stainless steel top in order to get that heat diffusion across the entire top to get it to cook evenly. As we all know, cast iron is very, very popular in outdoor kitchens and indoor kitchens across the world, and it's been used for many, many years. And the marriage of stainless steel and cast iron is really beautiful when it comes to how this unit performs. We're looking at an overall width of this unit of just over 30 inches. And the depth is right around 18 and three quarters or almost 19 inches. And the height is just about 10 inches. Now, this is the 30 inch Le Griddle and it weighs just under about 100 pounds. And the majority of that weight is all in the griddle top. The griddle top is very heavy and I can teach you a lesson from my back in trying to move it around myself and lift it off and on and carry it around. Uh, if you'd like to be laid up for a week as well, you can do the same thing. I would highly suggest though to get a friend or a loved one here to be able to help you to pick this up and move it around the garage or the backyard if you need to. We're looking at 18,000 BTU from two U-shaped burners that you're going to find underneath the cooking top. 
Now these U-shaped burners are covering a really, really good width of this cooktop, and I like the coverage that they bring. Now, when you look at the top, you can look at the measurements, but the question is how many square inches are available to cook on this top? I calculate right around 464 square inches available on this cooktop, and I'll just tell you that we've been able to make quite a few dishes where we're cooking in multiple zones across the top. Now, we have 36 inch griddles, and we've seen some other larger griddles as well, but this is able to handle the size projects that we do for a family of four quite easily. The unit is rather simple when it comes to operation. If you look at the front, you'll see that there are two knobs as well as an igniter. And really that's all it is. You have a large fire picture where you'd be looking at trying to get a high heat and you have a small fire picture where you'd be looking at trying to get a lower or uh, not quite as intense heat. Now, when you look at the unit, you might say, well, it's, it's pretty simple. All it is is two knobs and an igniter. Yes, you're right. But one of the things I love about it is that simplicity is perfect in a griddle. I don't need anything more complex than that. I need to be able to control my heat from a really hot sear all the way down to a lower saute or sweat. But really it comes down to this is a simple unit, but has some nice additions that are done underneath the cooktop. On each burner, there's a thermocouple that makes sure that there is no flow of gas without the existence of fire. Now, on the side of the unit, you also see quite a few holes that are built in all along the sides and the back, and it allows for breathability. The holes around the unit protect it from the wind, but also allow the excess heat and gas to escape around the outside so that there's nothing building up underneath. Now, there's four feet on the unit, and they're screw in with rubberized ends. The four feet make it so you can level it in case you're on an uneven surface by moving the screw in and out but we find that it sits on a table and it doesn't really move, it's really sturdy. Now you can install this in a bunch of different options. One way is to use a tabletop like we have it here. We just have our booze block table and sitting on top of it is this unit. Now, my initial concern was since this thing puts out 18,000 BTUs, am I gonna burn up my table underneath? Well, we've done quite a few cooks on this table, everything's been fine. So the heat goes up, not down, and there is also a protection plate underneath to keep any of the heat from going directly down as well. Now, so tabletop is one option. Another option is to put it as an installation. Now you can install this in an outdoor countertop in an outdoor kitchen, and they have multiple options for that. One of the options is that there's an insulating liner for installation, and that's something that we still need to get as we're building this into our outdoor kitchen. Now, one of the things that we also opted for was the lid option. I didn't want all of the elements from outside to be able to get on the cooktop in between cooks. I wanted to be able to clean the cooktop after we used it and then be able to put the lid down on top knowing that next time I go outside, it's just lift the lid and I'm ready to go. As opposed to everything that's been happening on top, I need to wash it back off and do a second cleaning of the top before we actually have another cook. Now, in addition to the insulating liner and the top that you can look at, the lid, they also come with a cart that you can get as an option. That cart really turns this into a traditional grill that you would see on like a back patio or something that has roller wheels where you can use it as a standalone unit. I think these really shine though on tabletop or on a countertop or built in. I think those are really, really great uses for this as you're gonna be able to use this for years to come. Now, when I think about longevity, I think about stainless steel and my experience with the longevity of stainless steel. I have a grill that's a five burner gas grill that we purchased back in 2004 or 2005. This year is 2020, so I've had that grill for 16 or so years. And that grill looks almost the exact same as the day I bought it, primarily because that stainless steel really is stainless. It fights the elements, it looks great, that's what I like about this. That 304 stainless steel that's built through here means that this unit is just going to last. Now, the griddle shipped to us on a pallet. It came in a truck that had a lift gate on the outside, and it came on a pallet that was shrink wrapped with the lid on top for us since we ordered that as an accessory. So we found that the shipping on this unit was actually perfect. It's one of the only grills that has arrived in almost perfect condition when it's gotten to us with the box and the shrink wrap and everything being untouched. Assembly on the LaGriddle was actually rather easy. When you pull it out of the box, you were able to lift the top off and set it off to the side. And really the only thing you have to do is take some of the adhesive uh, protection sticker off of the outside of the stainless to make sure that it's arrived in perfect condition. 
Peeling that off was fun. We had the kids come out and we peeled it off for you know a couple minutes together. And it was nice to be able to see that the stainless was unscratched and perfect when we got it here. Other than that, it was just hooking up the propane hose to the bottom of the griddle, tying it to a propane tank, and then we're ready to cook. Now, is it easy to use? Absolutely. It's pretty much light it and go. So you can cook whatever you want to on it. We've cooked everything from Crunchwrap Supremes, from Taco Bell, we've done quesadillas, we've done Philly cheesesteaks, we've done pancakes, breakfast with bacon and hash browns, eggs, the whole entire works, as well as some hibachi and teppanyaki cooking. And doing all of that on the griddle, you can actually see the state of the griddle. We've done at least 10 or 12 cooks on it, and it still looks absolutely brand new. So cleaning it is rather easy. One of the things our friend recommended to us, who also has one of these units, was in order to clean it, just take a bucket of ice and pour it on the hot surface, and you can watch that ice put off all kinds of steam as it turns into water. That really releases the dried bits and the burn-on pieces from the cooktop, as well as using a Scotch-Brite sponge on the top to make sure that you get all of the bits off that the ice and water doesn't release. Now, all of that being said, there's a lot of features and a lot of things that we could talk about with this unit. It really all comes down to, do I like it? And the answer is yes. I mean, we have 10, 15 cooks on this, and I really do like it. It's dense, it doesn't move, it's really hefty. I like that I have it on the table and I can move it back and forth. My table doesn't rock, the griddle doesn't rock. It is a solid unit. Now, I also really like that there's a drip tray on the front. I like that there's not just a two inch hole on the front for me to put those things in, because on other griddle units that we have, I have lost shrimp and vegetables and things like that doing hibachi. I've lost it down that hole, and it makes me sad when a 16 you know, size shrimp goes down that hole. Come on, let's be honest. Now, I like that the drip tray is on the front, and you can just move things off of the front right into the drip tray, and it holds a cook's worth of scrap and water without any problem. I also really like that there's even cooking from left to right. The entire surface is solid from one, one end to the other. And I found that when I turn it up all the way on both sides, I can sear all the way across. It's gorgeous and I love how even it cooks. But my favorite part of this grill, and it's not even a feature that this grill has, it really comes back to people are why I'm excited about this grill. But what this unit allows us to do is gather people together. My kids love to cook on La Griddle. My friends and my family who are my neighbors around here, who are part of our social circle, they like to come over and be able to put things on La Griddle and participate in cooking. That is what makes this so much fun, is that this is a communal cooking device. It's about getting people together and getting them around fire with food and being able to create something. And it's not even me cooking the entire time. I love being able to hand the spatula to somebody else and say, hey, give it a go, and I can be able to help coach them through a cook. And that's what makes it social. So it's really about getting people together around a unit that allows you to be able to have fun in the backyard and use fire and food to be able to help deepen relationships. Now, why is it that we do what we do? Well, we do this to help you make educated decisions about what it is you wanna buy for your outdoor cooking arsenal. When you're trying to get people together in the backyard, what is the gear that you should have to be able to make it work for you? So if you are looking to be able to create an outdoor kitchen or use this on a tabletop to gather people around to cook on a griddle, this is a great unit for you to consider. We want you to buy the stuff that's right for you and we want you to learn how to use what you've got. That's why it's not just reviews, it's also techniques, it's also some recipes. So if this video has been valuable to you, do us a favor and go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on a video that we have coming out at all. And also if you hit the bell, the little bell notification, that'll make sure you get notified of when a new video comes out. That way you're not missing anything. Now, if you'd like to support us on the channel and you're thinking about making a purchase, check out the links below in the description. It doesn't cost you any more than it would if you bought it without clicking on our links. It's just that the big brands share their revenue with us to be able to help us bring in new gear and keep the reviews coming for you. Also, if you're on social media, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. We'll have all those links in the description below. We'd love to see you on those social channels and be able to talk back and forth about gear and recipes. We always have new recipes and reviews coming your way, so I can't wait to see you next time, but I wanna say thank you for joining us 
and it's bye for now. We'll see you soon.